We now know that when you go from a narrow focus on something and you begin to open your focus, mm. you create a sense and awareness that the act of opening your focus causes you to stop thinking. And if you stop thinking, you no longer activate those circuits and you start to slow your brain waves down. Mm. And as you slow your brain waves down, you start connecting to that autonomic nervous system, the thing that's giving you life. And all of a sudden, when you get beyond yourself, it says, uh, he's gone. Let's step in and just clean up this mess before he gets back. Really? And its job is to create order and balance. So your body will start to do that for you. The innate intelligence will step right in. Once you connect, you got to connect. So you got to know how to change your brain waves. You can't change your brain waves. Wow. You stay in that active state. You're basically moving furniture around. You're analyzing your life within some disturbing emotion. And I can tell you, after looking at all those brain stands, if you're analyzing your life within some disturbing emotion, you're going to make your brain worse. Mm. In fact, you are thinking in the past, right? So you teach people the formula, how to open their focus, change their brain waves, connect to that invisible field, and all of a sudden, different compartments of the brain start synchronizing. The front of the brain starts talking to the back of the brain. The right side starts talking to the left side. And all of a sudden, what sinks in the brain links in the brain. And all of a sudden, you see this person starting to feel more like themselves. Just 10 minutes a day, three times a day with 120 people, trading resentment, frustration, fear for gratitude, mm -hmm. appreciation, and thankfulness, measuring their immune response, the, the chemical immunoglobulin A, your primary defense against bacteria and viruses, the best flu shot you'll ever get lives right. within, innately within you. Turns out when you're frustrated, when you're impatient, when you're fearful, the immune system dials down because you're in an emergency. It's not, it's that all your energy is going for some threat in your outer world. There's no energy in your inner world for growth and repair. But how do you turn that around? So then as people begin to open their heart, can that chemical begin to, to um, elevate. Mm -hmm. Four days, 50% change in the 120 people. Their, their IGA levels went up 50% in four days. Wow. That's, your body's immune system is now upregulating genes that are making proteins and immunoglobulins and, and antibodies that you don't need a flu shot. In other words, your inner state is greater than your outer world. Mm -hmm. So then just by doing that, we now know that your immune system is going to get stronger by the same means. Take 120 people or 50 people and measure 7,500 gene regulations, okay? In four days, two genes that suppress cancer growth and tumors are activated and upregulated. The genes that stimulate stem cells to go to damaged tissues and repair them, upregulated. The gene for oxidative balance is upregulated, anti-cancer, anti-aging, mm. anti-heart disease, anti-stroke, anti-neurodegenerative, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, just your body's naturally doing this. The gene for neurogenesis, the growth of new neurons in response to novel experiences and learning. This is four days, the mm. gene switches on. Uh, the, the gene for uh, more balance in the pituitary and the pancreas, the gene for the microtubules of the cells, the, the little, the little fibers that respond to energy and frequency. Right. So in four days, we now know that you can change your genetic destiny if you just practice the inner work. We have research to show that 60 days of meditation, five days a week, will lengthen your life. The right. telomeres, the little shoestrings on the end of your DNA get longer. That means your biological age is changing. So we, we have the evidence now to show people what's possible. We have brain scans that, that are so outside of normal that when neuroscientists see them, they're blown away because the amount of energy that's in the brain during this transcendental moment is uh, hundreds of times outside of normal. Oh, wow. I mean, you can't make your brain do that. Something is happening to you and that person's having a transcendental moment. And we mm. now know that we can predict it and we now that know that we can induce it. So then there's the evidence there. Mm -hmm. Then you take our community and you see people with stage four cancer, with Parkinson's disease, with myasthenia gravis, with, with lupus, with MS, with uh, brain injuries, uh, uh, with rare genetic disorders, with uh, vertigo, uh, tinnitus, uh, all, uh, kidney failure, all kinds of health conditions come to a week long event. And then at the end of that event, they make significant strides in getting beyond the emotions of the past. Now think about this. The science says that the environment signals the gene, that's epigenetics. Mm -hmm. 
The end product of an experience in the environment is an emotion. So as long as you're living by the same emotion every single day, you're signaling the same gene in the same way. And if that gene is related to a survival emotion, a stress hormone, then you're down-regulating the gene and you're creating disease. So when the person trades that emotion and really breaks free from the chains of their past, and now they're feeling an elevated emotion, well, now they're dialing down the gene for MS mm -hmm. and they're upregulating the gene for health and balance. And so the person will, you'll say to them, where's the disease? Well, I'm not the same person. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not the, and, and the side effect of that is a transformation in healing. So the funny thing about it is the person who has the healing is not talking about the healing. Whether it's blind people seeing, deaf people hearing, hearing, we have crazy evidence now. What they're talking about is how amazing they feel mm -hmm. because they're refreshed, they're, 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 they got a new lease on life. Yeah. And so now we have evidence in our research and that silences the critic to, to show that what's possible for people. And now we have evidence and testimony that we have evidence where people will stand on the stage and say, hey, I broke my back in three places. I, I haven't been able to stand up straight. I came into this event hunched over. I couldn't lay down. And now this guy's jumping around on the stage. He's laying on his back. He's touching his toes. He's, mm -hmm. he's, you can tell, I mean, this is, this, you, he's, he's having his moment. We freed, we changed somebody. Yeah. Someone with Parkinson's disease can't swallow, mm. can't chew, can't blow her nose, can't stand up. One moment, one moment, the next thing you know, <clears throat> she's blowing her nose, chewing, swallowing. We changed her body. We changed her life and we changed her future. And she doesn't look like a movie star and she doesn't look like she's a vegetarian and she doesn't look like she's buffed. She just looks like a normal person. Now the person in the audience who's watching that and looking at this person and seeing that they're no different than them, it just starts to mm. cause them to think if someone else can do it, I can do it. So you see the person with the stage four cancer that got the, you know, the voodoo curse that they have three months to live. And now they have no evidence of cancer in their body and they're standing on the stage telling wow. that story and somebody in the audience is checking her out going, I have the same condition and if she can do it, I'm gonna step right in that footprint and I'm gonna do it wow. the way she did it. And all of a sudden, you start seeing this change in the community in a week-long event because once there's a breakthrough, right? I mean, it's like a four-minute mile. Everyone it's can it's, do it, it's yeah. in the field, you yeah. know? And, but it's not only in the field, you're seeing evidence in three-dimensional reality yeah. and, and evidence is the loudest voice right now. Yeah. And so people don't want to see talking heads. Anybody can see them on the internet. Information is readily available. What they want to see is evidence. And so when you have evidence in the scientific realm and then you have evidence in a, in a, in a, in a community of people and it, you're not doing anything that's so extreme that, that, that excludes anybody, it's inclusive and mm -hmm. we're using science as the contemporary language of mysticism. Mm. It is science that's gonna demystify the mystical. If I talk tradition, culture, religion, any of those things, spiritual principles, people are gonna shut off. You're gonna divide an audience. But science creates community. Right. So, so by building a scientific model, I don't subscribe to any type of meditation because I, I look at the evidence of what we've gathered in, let's see, by applying this formula, to what extent can we prove to human beings how powerful they really are? And, and I think that that has become something that has mystified me because when I see blind people seeing in our workshops, I have to tell you <laughs> that I'm more surprised than anybody. I'm <laughs> yeah. standing up there shaking my head and, and we, have, we have great evidence. This, you know, one woman was, uh, she's a nurse and um, one day she just uh, uh, wakes up and she's got a blind spot in her eye. <clears throat> she can't see in the lower left-hand quadrant of, of both eyes, six o'clock to nine o'clock. Wow. She goes, to the, she's a nurse, she goes to see her, her colleagues. Um, they do a scan, stroke uh, on the optic nerve. Wow. Uh, and now she's uh, legally blind. Uh, she can't drive her car, she runs her own company, she can't run her company, she can't type, she can't use the computer. She's compromised in a big way. Now with a stroke, you have two weeks really, that's the window. And if nerve cells are gonna come back online, it's going to be those first two weeks. Wow. If they don't come back, the prognosis is live with it. Whether you have paralysis or whatever, that if a stroke causes brain damage and 
usually two to three weeks, you don't see many, much change. So they gave her the, you know, the, the prognosis. You have to learn to accommodate and wow. live with it. And so she, she, she wasn't satisfied with that answer. And she goes to one of her dear friends who's a physician. And the physician says, go check out the Spenza guy. And she says, why don't you come with me? So they come to our event in Brighton in, in the UK Was together. this within the two weeks or was this later, do you know? Oh no, this is a year later. Wow. This is a year later. And so it's supposed to be irreversible at yeah. that point. And so um, she comes to the event and then she comes to the event for two reasons. To listen to this, to learn how to live with her handicap. That's the extent of what's possible. Have more mind. peace and yeah. yeah. And and then create a nonprofit to help people. Those were her two things. Mm. So somewhere in the middle of the event, where, where uh, she it occurs to her that she could actually possibly heal her eyes. Mm. So she goes for it. She lays down after one of the meditations we lay down at the end, and all of a sudden, like in her head, she starts feeling this heat and this crackling sensation. Now. You have one of two options when something like this happens. You get scared and You get run scared, away. <laughs> it's the unknown, you yeah. contract, like, uh, and your brain goes into high beta and you disconnect. Something's wrong, maybe right, I'm right. hurting something. Yeah, I'm having another stroke, whatever. Or you surrender and, and relax dive, into it. Yeah, you go in. Yeah. And she, she let go and she, she had the most incredible experience. She laid there for the longest time, opened her eyes, and she said it was like the lights came back on. She said, wow. I could see completely. We sent her for a scan. The Monday morning after that week-long event, the scan that had the, the left lower quadrant on both eyes from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock was black. The post-scan, there isn't one black spot wow. anywhere on, the, on her eyes. Because she had already done a scan a year prior. Yeah, 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 yeah. She had the scan. So wow. we'll, 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 give you the, we'll give you the evidence. But, but that is not natural. Wow. That's not normal. But, but how do you explain that in conventional science? I mean... The truth is, is that we have incredibly powerful innate qualities mm. for regeneration and healing mm -hmm. once you hit that button.